So we have a video recap of the Rick Rude, Jake Roberts feud. So Rick Rude had been giving lucky females in the crowd the Rude Awakening, where he would offer them a chance to be kissed by him, I suppose. And one day, Jake Roberts' wife Cheryl was in the front row. And Rick Rude gave her this offer. She turned him down. Of course, Rick Rude didn't take that very well. Grabs her by the wrist. Of course, Jake Roberts didn't take that very well. Very well. He comes running out. They have a giant brawl. <laughs> no, no, Vinny. He comes running out to defend his well, wife, and Rick Rude lays him out and stomps a mud well, hole. Well, yeah, but he ran so fast Some like he things missed. Things never change. No, he yeah. didn't miss. He went for Heenan first. Oh, I so see. that was a distraction, and then and then Rude jumped him. But I mean, the point remains. He went yes. to save his wife. He got his ass kicked. That but at happen. least it wasn't one on one. That did happen. So then Rick Rude, to fan the flames, begins to wear tights with a picture of Cheryl Roberts' face over, as you noted, his penis. Still gyrating around, and uh, we go to a Jake promo where he just says, I, I, pardon me, uh, this is still in the recap. As Rude is wrestling in these tights, we get an inset promo from Jake where he says, he's waiting for Rick to wear those tights one more time, and if he does, I'm going to take him right off. So Rude's out there wrestling. When Jake runs out, because as promised, he's going to take these tights off, gives Rude a massive giant backdrop right into his ass, and then begins to yank the tights off, and there's a giant black Dude, circle. Dude, this was the greatest. <laughs> First off, when you have somebody cut a promo and say, if you wear those tights again, I'm going to take them off, it sounds like just some idle threat. Not to Jake Roberts. No. This guy wears the tights. Jake Roberts goes to keep his promise because he's a baby face. And the best part of the backdrop, when he landed on his ass, he leaped up, he bent over and grabbed his ass with both hands to sell it, which allowed Jake Roberts to pull his pants down and expose his ass. That's true. It was so perfect. I don't even know if that was the intention for him to land on his ass on the backdrop, because who would ever want to take a backdrop no, and land no, on their ass? not if you can avoid That's like it, the no. worst thing they can do, yeah. but he did, but it was fucking perfect the way it played into him grabbing his ass and then Jake pulling his pants down so he's mooning yes. the crowd. And as we've mentioned before, Rick Rude in real life was a tough, tough, tough dude, but when it came time for him to play... To show ass... And literally here to show ass and be humiliated and 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 scurry to cover as he's trying to to, to uh, what's the opposite of expose? Cover himself. Good work, Vinny. You're a professional podcaster. So an hour you had. I had an hour to think of words for that. And so Heenan makes a save and Rude gets away. So eventually we go back to Saturday night's main event for a interview with Gene Oakland. Interviewing Rude and Heenan. And now Rude has, time to, has had time to calm down. He's totally changed his tune. He is never embarrassed about his body. He's sure that Jake Roberts and Damien could never beat him in a three-legged race. What he said, because it's all about whose dick is bigger. And it is now, yes. Then they go to Jake, and he's mm -hmm. with his wife. And she's got a tiny fig leaf. Because, of yes. course, in Genesis, that's... Well, actually, that's not in the actual book. But in all the goofy pictures, there's a fig leaf over Adam's ding-dong. I won't use a lewd word here. But anyway, she's pointing out that his dick is tiny. This tiny leaf will cover it. Yes. She was not the best promo I ever saw. How could you be a good promo talking about a tiny fig leaf covering that, Rick Rude's actually, dick? That's a fair point. Samoa Joe couldn't cut that promo. <laughs> I would not want to see him try. I would. <laughs> so it's Rick Rude versus Jake Roberts. Now, they do start with a lockup, but if you saw this lockup, you would be okay with that. Dude, if we just recapped what happened in this match, mm -hmm. people would be so furious that we're not angry at it. But you actually have to see it. Yes. They lock up and exchange holds. Yes. But if you see them lock up and exchange holds, it is the most violent lockup. Mm -hmm. It is the most violent exchanging of holds. Yes. Jake Roberts has fire in his eyes. He wants to use this top wrist lock to tear his shoulder off. When, when he does an arm ringer, he is trying to remove Rick Rude's arm from his body. And Rick Rude is reacting like it might happen. Yes. He's selling the shit out of this arm ringer. So Jake's running wild, and he holds Rude through the ropes so Cheryl can slap him right in front of the referee. Jesse says this should be a DQ. He is not wrong. And Jake is pleading with the ref, please don't disqualify me. It was unfair. I will send my wife to the back. And that's how they can do a commercial break. But 
The best part is, Jesse says, this should be a disqualification. That is outside interference. And Vince says, well, that's just a woman slapping a man's face. And Jesse says, oh, so you're sexist now. And Vince has no comeback. <laughs> it's outside interference. She attacked a combatant. That's a disqualification. Oh, we'll get into that later. Don't you worry. All right. So we come back after the break. Rude uh, pushes Jake into the post and takes over. And they don't do much after that. Jake is able to avoid the Rude Awakening. He hits the DDT. He's down selling, so there's a slight delay. Bobby Heenan, who may have been in this match the most athletic performer, scurries up to that top rope, frantically waves to the back, and then he attacks Jake for the DQ. So, in fact, it is true. If a man runs in for the DQ... Or if the man runs into the match, it's DQ. But if a woman in- involves herself in the match yes. physically, that's not a DQ. It that's is a warning. WWF rules, ejected. 1988. Yes. So Bobby is, of course, calling for Andre to come out. And Andre comes out, beats up Jake, throws him out of the ring. But as Bobby and Andre are tending to Rude, Jake goes into his bag and pulls out a snake. And Rude and Bobby flee, but Andre is slow. And Andre turns around, and you've been on the internet for like 10 minutes you have no doubt seen the gif the, the next 10 minutes of the show are basically been summed up in one gif of andre the giant being scared of stakes and they tease this forever and ever and ever it's just jake walking andre around the ring and andre backing up slowly the entire time finally jake does what he can to put the snake onto andre it's sort of on him and andre is sort of holding the snake there the snake is actually blatantly trying to get away and uh, Jake has to grab the snake, put it back on Andre. And just in case there was not enough uh, genital references in this match, Vince has to point out it's onto the crotch area. Dude, this was the greatest thing on this show and the full replay they show on next week's show. Andre the Giant selling for this snake. And you got to think about Andre the Giant. He never sold for anybody ever. Like, that's the storyline, okay? Mm-hmm. But that's also pretty much real life. Sure. There weren't a lot of guys that Andre the Giant was selling for. But you watch him sell, and he put Rick Rude to shame when Rick Rude was selling that backdrop onto his ass. He fucking put everybody to shame. He's fucking freaking out. He's trying to flop around and not lose this snake. He literally grabs his chest. Yes. And he starts to fall to the mat, at which point Vince McMahon says, and this is a direct quote, he's been scared to death. Uh, he's been scared unconscious. <laughs> Vince had to correct himself. Well. Because, in fact, Andre was selling it like he had a heart attack. Yes, yes. As a result of his snake being on him and passed away in the middle of the ring. Yes. He's laying there dead. Bobby Heenan starts freaking out. He goes over and he tears Andre's shirt open. And he starts pounding on his chest. Yes. And Jesse's saying, give him mouth to mouth. And Bobby's not going to give Andre the giant mouth to mouth. But he kept thinking about it. But he couldn't bring himself to do it. But he's pounding on the chest. And Vince is like laughing about this. Is this guy's dead on national television? (laughs) They bring out all the geeks. And after commercial, they finally help Andre. He starts to sit up a little bit. And this was like 15 minutes of the show. Yeah. The heart attack, the revival, and then them trying to get him backstage as he's looking around for this snake, and he's pointing, and he's looking under the ring. He's insisting Bobby Heenan check under the apron and point out that the snake is gone. It's nowhere near. He's scared shitless. Listen, Vinny, mm-hmm. it's been a while, but it's time. Oh, I see what you're going to do here, yes. Andre the Giant long overdue yes it really is is hereby inducted into the brian and Vinny hall of awesome because he was awesome here because you think about the end of andre the giant's career and he's doing these shitty one minute matches with the ultimate warrior and all of this stuff and i mean that's coming in a few years but i mean we have been watching saturday night's main event dating back to 85 and there has not been one thing that Andre has been involved in that has not been wildly entertaining. Now, granted, his matches aren't the greatest, okay? Yeah. Hogan match at WrestleMania 3 is is pretty much horrible, and he can't move very well. But as a character, as a legendary performer, he's the fucking greatest. 
every one of these vignettes, angles, and you haven't seen it yet, Vinny, but but they do an interview with Andre on this show, which is pretty damn great. Just wait till next week. <laughs> gotcha. He does the greatest fucking promo. This guy is in the Hall of Awesome. Long overdue. So before he is revived and slowly making his way back to the, the backstage, you can imagine how long it takes to move a disoriented, cautious, wary Andre the Giant. But he's still down on the mat. And Bobby Heenan, he can't just do chest compressions to Andre. Andre's a giant. Bobby Heenan is doing hammer fists as hard as he possibly can to the sternum, trying to restart the giant's heart. And he's listening for a heartbeat. He's begging him for help. There's every indication we have just seen this man die before our eyes. And Vince McMahon squeals with glee. Andre sticking his nose in Jake the Snake's business. And that's what he gets for it. Wow. Death. Wow. Literal death. This guy is so biased. Yes. Sickening. <laughs>